voilà, le, le grand moment va arriver euh, et en regardant ces images, euh, regardez là, regardez. C'est la libération, encore une fois. Et c'est fini. Et la rivière, elle est libre. Et ça coule. J'ai filmé ce moment historique, évidemment, je l'ai filmé. Le moment où ça sautait, c'est incroyable. Et j'avais compris qu'il y avait à ce moment pas seulement un barrage qui s'envolait, finalement, mais aussi qu'en même temps, que il y avait des milliers de barrages, si on peut dire, ou des obstacles dans le cerveau des hommes qui en même temps sautaient. Parce que je savais quand des gens vont voir cette image, ils comprennent qu'un barrage n'est pas pour toujours on peut défaire ce que l'homme a fait à un moment donné, qu'on ne plus d'utilité, pour le rendre à la nature. Oui, c'était une libération, une libération vraiment dans tous les sens du mot. Quand nous parlons de barrières removing barriers, for the most part, nous parlons de removing obsolete barriers, barriers that no longer serve a purpose. So one of the main things we're looking at is economic value and does it serve one right now or not and often what we're finding especially with small barriers and small dams is often they're not dams require maintenance and that makes sense when the dam serves an economic purpose but when it doesn't serve an economic purpose anymore you're passing that price tag on to future generations without any kind of benefits or economic benefit that actually helps pay for that maintenance And instead, you're really leaving relics or debris, kind of anthropogenic debris in river systems, kind of walking away from the responsibilities to, to the public. It's the biggest dam removal that had never, never happened in Europe. It's the first time. And it will open more than 80 kilometers of rivers for salmon. This is a historical salmon river. Every year, some salmons are arriving there, and they can't go through, of course. They come back. No, I'm sure next year they are here. It used to be a lake, and now you're having a new river with new banks and a new vegetation around. So it's a new wilderness, actually, that has colonized with the new river banks. Sería un gran avance para aquí para nuestra ensenada, porque de ahí volverían a bajar nutrientes que quedan en las pozas arriba, subiría pues el, la anguila, la trucha, el salmón, el reo que hace años había algún reo ahora no se ven. Aquí hace años que mi padre iba con su abuelo ahí al río donde es agua dulce, y había un arenal que le llaman el copre 
y ahí había el berberecho, crecía ahí el berberecho y después la riada no lo traían para la, pa la ensenada, cosa que hace años que eso ya no se ve por el río y el berberecho es que no se ve ni en la ensenada. First time in 200 years they had access to the river because uh, the river site was totally blocked. There were bushes, uh, there were fences uh, until the stem. It was dangerous, but now they can cycle there. They are strolling with kids, uh, walking dogs, uh, kayaking. It's almost two kilometers uh, pathway next to the river, but what they can use now. This is our national treasure, so to call, and uh, Estonians should uh, be proud of it and protect it. Hay informes dentro del propio expediente de extinción que recomiendan la eliminación parcial o total del obstáculo. Es que ese proceso de naturalización que se iniciaría con la eliminación del obstáculo eh, abriría una posibilidad de uso turístico pionera en Galicia, que sería que la gente vendría a ver cómo se naturaliza el río después de la eliminación del obstáculo. Generaría también una mejor conexión por el río, por los senderos fluviales, entre los ayuntamientos de Soutomayor, donde desemboca el río, y Ponte Caldelas, que es uno de los ayuntamientos más importantes del sistema fluvial verdugo Oitaben. Y por último, y muy importante, es que eliminar el obstáculo es un 75% más barato que adaptarlo a la legislación eh, actual. Como recomendación general, digamos que cuando las barreras son pequeñas y son obstáculos obsoletos, eh, lo más sencillo es dejar trabajar al río. Entonces, al principio, cuando hacíamos obras pequeñas, intentábamos dejar al río una forma conforme a nuestro pensamiento. Eso nos llevó a gastar más dinero del necesario. Luego comprobamos cómo simplemente con demoler la infraestructura el río ya se colocaba como quería colocarse, ¿no? de forma que eh, proyectos que a lo mejor nos gastamos 100.000 euros en desarrollarlo, ahora mismo nos estamos gastando 4.000 o 5.000 euros en hacer la actuación. so many people against this. As we explain to them why we are doing them, we, we involve them, we involve their ideas, we try to calm them down. On the first day, when we started demolition to them, we asked the whole village, the whole town to come. There were like 300 people on the site. The minister came and made a speech and everybody got to ask all their questions what they have. Straight from me, straight from the minister, and uh, they were, they felt involved, they felt in, informed. I am standing at the Brojola River. Brojola River is in the Natura 2000 area and is also in the regional park of Neres. At the same point, this, this iconic migratory fish species meet the dam that blocks their migratory river. Also, it may be the very, very first dam removal in Lithuania ever. So we're actually standing on the remains of Kangaskoski Dam that has been partly, mostly removed uh, about two weeks ago. And this is the lowermost dam. So far, it's the biggest dam removal in Finland, especially when there's three hydropower dams that are now removed. 
it will, I think, function as an amazing example for any other river in, in Finland, you know. We didn't just uh, remove an uh, obsolete dam that no one is using for anything, but actually we were able to negotiate the removal of hydropower dams, which is amazing. In this river, we'll live and spawn and reproduce naturally uh, critically endangered fish species, and I'm referring to landlocked salmon. Be born in, in this river in Finnish side, will migrate to the Russian side and then go back, come back again for the reproduction. So it's part of the global even activity to stop the whole, you know, the whole loss of biodiversity. And uh, here we can do it in function, in, in action. The ecosystem is functioning, like uh, ecosystem resilience is getting back. The whole ecosystem is a complex system from the catchment area and the riparian forest and the species in the water. The whole complexity is working like naturally afterwards, so that is the aim of these kind of big restoration projects. I see the river continuity or connectivity, is, it is the key to the ecosystem resilience. So the ecosystem function uh, like normally or naturally if the connectivity is uh, taken care of. So dam removal is uh, the best option for connectivity. And we've now seen how how real progress is made on that front when we've got the first really big major dam removal projects in, in Finland happening. Actually, as we speak, it's created a snowball effect that nobody can stop anymore. instantes, 1200 kilos de goma 2 la han dejado reducida como ven a escombros precisamente ahora se trabaja en la Ahí hemos visto la demolición de una de ellas L'eau c'est comme donc les rivières c'est les veines de la planète on peut dire c'est quelque chose d'essentiel pour pas trop y toucher Sinon, on met en question un grand nombre d'écosystèmes et finalement aussi l'homme lui-même. Nous avons besoin des rivières. Listen, sound of the cellule. She's singing again.